Welcome to the Learn to Judge Beer live stream. Pour yourself a beer and join in as we cover everything from assessing and scoring beer through to identifying and fixing faults. Good evening, everyone. It's that time of week again. And luckily this week, it's hot outside. We got a nice, light, refreshing, crushable beer. No, hang on. Sorry. In peace out. Um, we could have done it better. But it's MP Stout Night. It's my favourite style. It's one that I've been bugged quite a bit to do. And one of the people who bugged me to do it is our guest tonight. So, Dan, do you want to tell us a bit about yourself? I do it, yeah. Um, so I'm Dan. Um, I'm part of the Worcestershire Homebrew Club. Helped to organise that club. Um, been a home brewer for uh, probably about five or six years now, I guess. Um, and then probably a BJCP judge for about four years, I think, um, as as well. So we've done a we've done a training program through uh, WHBC for for new judges. So I was part of that first training program that we put together. Um, so yeah, and I love imperial stouts as well. Nice. So, uh, that's uh, that's why I was bugging you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're a lovely yeah. style. So already I can see we got James in chat. Hello, James. How are you doing? And Steve might be back. He's just rushed off to get the beer. So there we go. And of course, we got Rich back with us as always. How are you doing, Rich? Uh, hot, as everybody else is. I'm racing around, getting ready to go on holiday at the end of the week. So too much to do. And an Imperial style will make it better. Oh, that's good then. But yeah, it's definitely hot, so please excuse any fan noise in the background of any of us. It's too hot not to have a fan on. So, without any further ado, shall we crack a beer? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, are you back yet, Steve? Uh, give us a shout when you are, but we're cracking the Hercule. Drop the unopened bottle, got the spare. Oh, no. oh dear. <laughs> That was from James, if uh, anyone missed that. He's having a good step. And that's before drinking the Imperial Stout, you understand. Unless he's drunk the other bottle already. Or another bottle. Well, um, I notice he says what? getting the yeah. unopened one, so it sounds like he has opened one of them and started it. Yeah. OK, so quick glance at it so that I can remember what it looked like and then get my nose over it. So what we're expecting in the aroma is uh, rich, deep, complex, quite often quite intense, with a pleasant blend of roast, fruit, hops and alcohol. Light to moderate strong roast can have coffee, bittersweet or dark chocolate, cocoa, black licorice, tar or slightly burnt grain quality, sometimes with light caramel sweetness or toasty maltiness. Low to moderately strong esters often perceived as dark or dried fruit like plums, prunes, figs or black currants or raisins. Very low to fairly aggressive hops, so pretty much anything on the hop. Often English or American, so once again, pretty much anything on the hops. Uh, alcohol flavour optional, uh, which is interesting, wrong word in the aroma section, uh, but should mm. not be sharp, hot or solventy. The balance between the main four components can vary greatly. Not all need to be noticeable, but present should have a smooth interplay. Age can add another dimension, including a vinous or port-like impression, but not sourness. Age can decrease malt aroma intensity. So what are people getting? Yeah, let's talk about the aroma then. So out of 12 points, we're looking for anything to do with the malt, the hops, the esters, and any other aromatics. As you're describing them, remember to tell us what sort of hop or malt you're getting, how intense it is, and paint me some word pictures of what you're smelling on this beer. Yours a bit cool again, Rich. Yeah, a little bit on the cool side. That should really get these out of the fridge more than five minutes before we start. <laughs> Especially for these ones. I mean, next, next, the next one maybe not, but this one definitely. Uh, yeah, next. Ne just a reminder that next week we're taking a week off because Rich is away. Uh, the week after, it's the Angel Celebrator, the Doppelbock. So going out on a classic. Uh, hello, three words. Uh, Impy Stout in a Rochefort glass. Excellent. <laughs> James we, hasn't uh... been drinking yet. Drinking may help. <laughs> that sounds like a good plan, James. Yeah, 
So while people are getting some some words together. Yeah, whilst people are getting some words together, Dan, do you want to tell us about that competition? Oh yeah, the um, so yeah, it's a new competition that Midlands Craft Brewers have put together. Um, so it's part of the um, make sure I get this right, the Dudley uh, Winter Ales Festival, um, and they're completely separate to that or separate rooms. That that's going on as well on the Saturday, but they're they're putting together a, a homebrew competition as well. Um, so because it's based in the Black Country, they're, they're celebrating the um, uh, the red and black colours of the Black Country flag, um, and so entrants are invited to brew uh, beers which are either red in colour or, or black in colour. Um, so there's a nice a nice selection of styles to choose from for the competition. Um, so yeah, 26th November I think uh, is the is the date for the actual competition. Um, beers to be sort of sent the week before. Uh, so there's, there's a fair bit of time. Um, it's a fair bit of time to do it um, or to brew for it. Um, so, yeah, I think it's up to about, I don't know, 65, 63 entrants. There you go. So there's a bit of space left. So, um, yeah, hopefully it will be, this will be the first competition, um, hopefully of a regular one in the West Midlands now. Uh, so that's the plan. This is uh, another learning curve. WHBC done one pre-lockdown uh, as a learning curve. Midlands Craft Brewers, we um, uh, wanted to take that learning curve as well. So hopefully we can establish a, a regular uh, annual homebrew competition in the Midlands there. Oh, that would be great. Um, so, yeah, 63 spaces taken already out of 100. So 37 spaces left. Yeah. Anything red or black, basically. Um, I did hear talk at one point that black IPA wasn't included. That might have changed since. So Yeah. Just yeah, check. we tweaked it. We tweaked it to uh, bring it to Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Okay. You're extra fun. You get me to running the judging. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is uh, yeah, best judge for the day. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we're yeah. starting to get some words in. So three words has given us um, four words. Five words. I can't count already. I haven't been <laughs> drinking yet. Um, spicy alcohol, creamy, chocolatey malt. Okay, one thing I always like to say about chocolate is chocolate's a great descriptive word that everyone recognises, but it means different things to different people. When you think about the different types of chocolate, at one end you've got like um, a very milky chocolate, like, um, I don't know, dairy milk. Other brands are available. Uh, at the other end of the scale, you've got something like um, a really high percentage dark chocolate which is a lot more bitter and tastes significantly different to the dairy milk with all the milk in it so which try and james has called out a little further down the dark chocolate 70 percentage that's quite accurate yeah um i like the idea of the lotus biscuits there is a sort of biscuity thing there and that's nicely specific yeah um i quite like yeah. how, how the roastiness works with the chocolate as well it gives that sort of almost to, to me it's a dark chocolate kind of aroma um I, but i think that's i think that's the roasted malts working with uh some sort of some chocolate aromas going on as well yep steve's well, got a well, bottle of Willy wonka that's very very good <laughs> but it's not really saying anything <laughs> i'd love to see that on a score sheet though <laughs> <laughs> Oh. It, it oh. might happen. Steve is in that neck of the woods, isn't he? I'm talking blue breeze yeah. or one of the things we have in the Willy Wonka movies. <laughs> yeah, as long as we're not all going to blow up into blue breeze or whatever and yeah. start floating away. But yeah, I, I know what he means. There's a bit of all sorts going on in there. It's not, it's not the one-dimensional thing you might have. Yeah, it's, it's quite busy. There's definitely some sort of fruit toasted fruit sort of thing um sort of yeah like sort of toasted raisin bread thing something like that yeah yeah i think i'm, I'm mm -hmm. combining some of those other people that have called out like fruit and bread yeah i'm, I'm getting um i'm getting a coffee element as well i'm getting like a cold brew coffee element i think sometimes i always say cold brew but I think that's just the fact that it's, it's a cold, it's a cold beer, and uh, but that's the coffee element. But I quite like how they 
uh, they're all showing themselves at really good levels. They're not sort of not one around where he's out repairing. Um, so it's uh, it's quite nice. Each time you sniff, you're getting something a little bit different, but it's all well balanced in the aroma, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, when I do retro nasal, I'm getting a lovely balance of all of them. It's it's got the dark <coughs> chocolate. It's and pardon my accent, it probably sounds like dirk to you. I'm on about not light, um, dark chocolate. Um, so there you go. Yeah, Steve's kind of hit the nail on the head. What I was thinking of Bourneville plain chocolate, backed by a dark fruit. Certainly getting those elements, Steve. Um, okay, so is anyone, we also talk about what we're not getting as well as what we are getting. So we haven't heard anything about any hops or esters yet. Everything everyone's been saying is malt derived. Uh, so what about hops? What about esters? Are people getting any hops in the aroma? Um, if they're not there, then that's something that should be described that you are getting low or no hop aroma. Things like that. From my point of view, I think there is there's a touch of hop there, but at that very low level, I'll probably probably go be using descriptors that are sort of earthy and maybe into spicy a little bit descriptor. Um, just just to, but it is it's, it's at loads very low level. Um, I think if people are pulling out pulling out esters, we've had quite a few fruits. Yeah, there was some dark fruit mentioned, wasn't there? Yeah. Um, Quite interesting. Steve's just mentioned um, peppery spice. Yeah. Um, and I, I get that now. It, it's 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 kind of a, a, you know a, a, I didn't I literally sort of like the sniffing here and thinking oh nostrils are tingling a little bit. What's going on there? And 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 then Steve's message popped up. So I think there is a little bit. But again, it's really well balanced. It's really you know sort of working with everything else. Yeah, that no that keeps no. bugging me where it says alcohol flavor in the aroma section now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The other area to think on with these ones is this, those those age characters. Are we getting anything more? Yeah, Venus, Ports, Madeira. I'm we're not getting yeah, the, the fairly for me. I'm not getting any of the, the, the bad oxidation or bad aging ones, but there's, there may be some elements of those there. Uh, three words is now getting some licorice in. Now it's warming up. Yeah, I could def yeah. definitely go with uh, a call out of licorice. Um, uh, uh, it's worth calling out what level it's at. I, to, to me, it's 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 a supporting flavour. It's a low level, but aroma and a low level behind everything else. Yeah. All right. Um, give people a few minutes to just finish thinking of that, but also be thinking of your scores. So just for a reminder, we're scoring out of 12 points, malt, esters, hops, other aromatics. How do they match what Rich read out from the style guide? I'll put the style the guide back up so that you can see it. I did my usually find a piece of paper at this point, not beforehand. Yeah, time to launch the notepad and I'll actually keep a note of them again this week. I'm going old school and writing it down on a piece of paper. Yeah, I'd have to get up and go hunting for a notepad for that up here because I'm so used to doing everything electronically when I'm up here. I have got a pad somewhere up here. I'm just not sure where. I'm struggling to um, I'm struggling to remove points here, if I'm honest, um, because uh, the the ranges are quite large on this on the on the aroma style. So you've got light, light to moderately strong roast. You've got um, uh, where was it? Mm. There's an yeah. interesting question. Yeah, that. yeah all the levels, because a lot of them can be sort of low to intense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it sort of implies um, yeah, the, the balance of these main components can vary greatly. Not that it all needs to be noticeable. Those present shows must be in place, so that's important. But also the rich, deep, and complex, often quite intense at the beginning, yeah. sort of implies there should be a fair amount of something. Yeah, I mean, it's um, when there was brew con leads, I was asked to do a bit of a talk on impy stouts and I went through them there. And 
I think one of the main takeaways I gave out going through them was it's actually one of the hardest styles to be out of style for. Um, yeah. Because it's like, oh, it, it's light to high this, light to intense that. It's like practically yeah. anything goes. Um, so what have we got? Um, so you got see yeah, Three words, three like Belgian three. character. Yeah, I gotta try and put Belgian character into some more specific descriptors of, of why are you talking? Uh, some of the sort of yeast derived. Uh, sort of peppery and spicy things, or are we in some of the esters you get in some of the abbeys? Mm -hmm. uh, low level alcohol thing says James, but it's mainly holding up the other aromas rather than being a thing on its own. And also from James, yeah, I can't really find anything to knock points off for. It's well balanced and inviting enough. I've already had to dive into the taste. 12 points here, I think. So we'll put Dan on the spot first, then. I'm, you, going, I'm you, going 11. I am going to dock it one point, just because I think that spiciness is building quite a lot now. Um, for me, anyway. Um, the more I go to it, that's that's building quite a lot. Um, no, and I can't see that being mentioned. This is a massive paragraph for a realm. It but, is, uh, isn't it? Is. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna go with that one. Um. Yeah. I think I'd, I'd probably match you there, but I'd probably be talking about the overall intensity because it is to me quite restrained. Okay. Um. For 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 what I'd expect of, of a, a rich, deep, and complex. Um. Uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um. Yeah. They're all. It's all at the lower level to me. Yeah. yeah. I I think I'll go with rich there. Um. Again, eleven. But for much more the reasons of complexity levels and in your faceness of it, um, it's the aroma is a little bit more subdued than I would like to see for a world class MP. So eleven. Yeah, I, suppose, I suppose in a judging flight, if you was five beers in. And this came in, in at six beer, and you'd be sort of thinking, oh, I'm going to say, there's nothing really jumping out to me in, in, in Roma. It's, but I think as a, as a single beer, drinking a single beer, I think all the elements and the way that they work together, I think it's really nice in the Roma. Yeah, I mean, anyway, in the end, so I'm not sure about how many beer, anyone will be unhappy getting an 11 as a score anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Steve's yeah. coming at 11 as well. Okay, so moving on to appearance. Can you remember what it looked like before that aroma talk? Because we're talking about the colour, the clarity, and the head retention, colour and texture. So if you think back to what it looked like when you first poured it, how would you describe that? So with these dark ones, a little bit of light to judge clarity and then colour hints often helps by turning it around the other way. And you can just start seeing there's some hints of light coming through that. Yeah, I've got a big light up there and that's not seeing through it. Let's try the torch, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, even that, you're not really yeah, seeing yeah, much. Bit of edges, which gives you the sort of... Sort of colour. I'd say the, the, almost some mahogany... The highlight sort of thing. So it's, always, yeah, it's one of the good things you could add a bit more description there because there's quite a lot of space in this box, but not very much. Um, yeah. I mean, you can also s easily judge the clarity of it as well and whether it's um, cloudy or anything when you shine a torch through it. So even though it's very dark, I could clearly see the details on the torch. So I know it wasn't hazy, cloudy, murky, muddy. Which are some good words to describe everything from sort of a heifer through to a neeper. Yeah. So what do people see? We got any anything coming in? No, we haven't yet. Not yet. So uh, with appearance, just give us your score at the same time as your description. It's only worth three points, so we're not going to um, dwell too long on this section because we want more time to talk about the other sections later. Yeah. I mean, for me, I'd definitely call this this one. 
black, I say, with some mahogany highlights from feeling the boats. Um, with, ooh, is that an ivory head of fine bubbles that lasted quite well? It's, to, and then it's faded to a film and dense ring with some legs and um, lacing. So you've got, got most of the words in, in this one. It's, sometimes it's nice to have it in something like Windy Stout. Yeah. This, this is the one that always cracks me up in a way because I find the way different judges describe colours can generally be far more different than anything else they describe. So I mean, you, you said ivory there. I mean, to me, that would have to be like aged ivory, really old ivory, yeah. or yeah. Um, tan or yeah, something like I, that. I, 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 ivory to me is it's the keys on a knackered old piano my, my parents used to own. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Close up elephants. Sounds reasonable, but yeah. Um head texture, what did you think of that? So we got then we've got well we've got some stuff in from James, so we've got extremely dark, ruby, red, light struggles to get through, a fairly small light tan head that lingers, medium sized bubbles, but not particularly consistently textured head and Steve poured black with a tan head with fine tight pack bowls that fades with good lacing. Yeah, I think, think to me this is this is this is there's nothing to knock points off on this. Yeah, I mean for me it's a textbook example of what an Imperial Stout should look like. Um would I like the head to hang around a bit more and to cling to the glass a bit more? Yeah, maybe. Um but no, it looks lovely. It look especially when I first poured it, it looked beautiful. Three points for me all the way. As is usual, we are like 22 minutes in. Yeah. Uh, which is not where you'd normally be. Well, actually, you might spend 22 minutes drinking an empty stout, but I hope you spend 22 minutes drinking an empty stout. <laughs> uh, yeah, hopefully not 22 minutes judging an empty stout to get to yeah. appearance. So. Okay, so didn't see a score from three words or James. Um, James gives it a three as well. Okay. Right, shall we move on to flavour then? Because this is going to be the big one, and this is where we... Yeah. Three from three words, too. So, flavour. This is the fun one where we can get on with all the serious drinking. Um, flavour. 20 points. Malt, hops, fermentation characteristics. The balance. Any finish, aftertaste, or other flavour characteristics. So, this is a big section. It's, it's normally one of the... Uh, with a room where it's normally the bulk of the stuff that you end up writing down. Yeah, and this is this the area where you tend to be. Yeah, as Sarah says, it's writing a lot, so a lot of things will come through. So it's worth focusing on one sort of area, maybe focus on the malts to start with, then into the esters and on through the flavour, um, rather than trying to experience it all at once. Yeah, definitely. Um... There was little pointers under the. Uh flavour section are brilliant, especially when you're in an exam because you can just mark them off and sort of talk about them on your on your score sheet and mark them off. And, yeah, I was just um, looking to see if I had an exam score up. sheet. Yeah, depending on what style it is as well, you can jump about a little bit as well. So you might, on a, on a sort of like hazy IPA, for example, you'll probably talk about hops first and... Um, Etc. But on the more multi beers, they tend to follow the, the sequence of those little pointers underneath. Yeah. So I'm. Yeah, they are. I just wanted to double check. I was pretty sure that those descriptors were still there on the exam score sheet, and they are. Yeah. So you don't get any of the description descriptors on the left hand side of the fault. But you do still get the hints to comment on colour, clarity, head retention or whatever. So just make sure in an exam that you've not necessarily physically ticked all of those off, but at least mentally covered each of those sections. Uh, it will get checked under Merkin, uh, under when it comes to the Merkin to make sure your completeness is there. Yeah, there's the usual, not with this style, but with the more hoppy ones of whether a fruity flavour is is hot derived or an or a, or a fermentation ester. 
can be quite an interesting challenge. There's no one really knows in the end. <laughs> so, so long as you make a call one way or the other, you're probably yeah. good. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So what are people getting? Have we got anything? No, we haven't anything yet. Any thoughts from anyone on the flavour? Drink a bit more while I'm waiting. So there's again a bit more alcohol in the uh, flavour than what I am in the aroma. Is it's it a lot more noticeable in the flavour, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, we've got from James, uh, sort of no cream chocolate ice cream thing, heavily toasted brioche, pumpkin spices are quite prominent. So we're talking, yeah, some of it's worth expanding out pumpkin spices and talking about whether you were thinking, as in the spice market with the pumpkin. Yeah, I think that's that's. The BJCP being American, interestingly, yeah, yeah, pumpkin spices is fairly fairly well understood, um, but biscuit does mean British biscuit, which I have to keep reminding Americans. <laughs> and three words has come in with a complex medium hop and roast bitterness that builds and lingers into the finish. Dark chocolate malt with a medium caramel toffee note. Yeah, that's... They uh, agree with uh, most of those. I mean, it'd probably be nice to get a bit more descriptor around the hop. Um, once again, I'm, I'm coming back to, to earthy and spicy, uh, similar to what was in the what I was getting in the um, the aroma. But I definitely, I definitely agree with the medium caramel. I've actually got dark caramel in all of the, my media impressions. Um, but yeah, toffee is another good call. Yeah. I'm definitely getting, um, I think I'm getting a little bit of raisin as yeah. as well, I think. Um, like dark sugar, maybe, I don't know. Maybe, uh... Yeah, from Steve, we've got yeah, plain dark chocolate with a balanced dark fruit backbone, a uh, subtle peppery spice and roasty bitterness, and it intensifies as it warms up. Yeah, yeah so... And then James says he agrees that the alcohol stands out a bit, bordering on higher alcohols, though not in levels to be a problem. I'm certainly getting a definite sort of peppery alcohol thing in there. Um, maybe a little bit, a little bit of warmth. Um, but yeah, yeah. Not, 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 not unpleasantly so. I mean, the things I've, I've, I've called out, I call out these, are, they're, they're, they're very similar to what most people have done here. So things like, yeah, sort of. Of medium to high roastiness, um, talking about dark toast, maybe brown bread or something like that. Um, I'm probably going to coffee as well, something like some macchiato or something like that. So this this press with a little bit of milk in it, with that sort of roast bitterness to it. Um, I might even go and go, go coffee geeky and start talking about roast levels of beans and things, but that's probably unnecessary. Um, dark caramel. We go, yeah, peppery alcohol and sort of dried fruit. I think some people have gone raisin, I might have gone prune, but yeah, that's just in the same same area, really. Mm -hmm. What's everyone else thinking? Um, much the same. I'm getting, uh, I, I normally use the phrase cold brewed for coffee when I'm getting a milder, less bitter coffee and I, I think cold brew coffee is a good way to describe this for me um there's cold brew coffee there's the chocolate isn't as intense for me as it smelt um it's definitely there i'm definitely getting it but from the smell i expected it to be more more um bitter chocolate like you've mentioned there is certainly a element of earthy hop going on and some sort of um, fruit in the background, be it prune, um, raisin. It's definitely in that sort of area. How about you, Dan? Anything different from you there? Um, no, not really. I, I, I think in terms of yeah, the cold brew coffee is, uh, is is there in the flavor as well um 
I am getting a little bit concerned by that alcohol flavor. There. <laughs> it's, 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 it's building. Um, I'm almost going for a second pour, and and it's it's building quite a lot um, the more I drink of it. Um, but you know, sort of, it's a, it's a it does seem it's a nine percent beer, but um, I think in terms of the guidelines, then maybe it is building a little bit too much. It does it, seem to sneak up on you. It, it didn't. The first couple of sips I had didn't seem that strong on the alcohol. Um, so where are we? Um, I think Steve Steve's called out something interesting there. Oh, let's skip back. Yeah. So the James is pronouncing it there. Yeah. So um, yeah, I think I agree. I'm getting a little bit of green pepper in there. Yeah, that's a very good call, actually. Yeah, I, I like that. That's a good descriptor. But go, going back to yeah, James is um. Oh, yeah, the alcohol stands out a bit bordering on higher, but then into the, the feasting pronounced thickness of the finish. I think it'd be interesting to see what other people think around the finish, because um, here we're looking for aftertaste of roast, bitterness, and warmth, I think is the uh, the, close, the finish description here. Yeah. I think uh, because of that, though, because of that alcohol, um, then it's... It, I think that aging kind of character is coming a little bit through a bit more in the in the flavour. I always, I don't know, I sort of in terms of aging, then you can. I think different people pick up different flavours. Some people get like you know, I don't know if this is barrel aged, but you know they'll they'll get a woody character to it and etc. Some people just get sweetness from it, maybe vanilla and that kind of thing. Um, but I think because of that, because of that alcohol limit, I'm now thinking though, is it alcohol warm or is it that bit of spiciness coming through again? Um, that's just like biting on the finish a little bit. So, I, yeah. I did wonder really the same. Beer, this is. <laughs> I did wonder the same, and when Steve mentioned a green capsicum, yeah, suddenly it started me questioning. Hang on, is that all warmth from alcohol, or is it? Yeah. Yeah. Or is it uh, a bit of peppery uh, spiciness going on? And it's not quite complex enough for James. Yeah. So do you want to dig into some scores? Yeah, I'll put the uh, style guide up again so that you can see that. But we're talking out of 20 points. How well does it match the flavour profile that's on the screen now? I like that. They, they, probably not a, de a descriptor for a score sheet, but from three words, the lack of complexity is down to how digestible, which is a very, uh, very Belgian word, uh, it is compared to a typical mm. Yeah, I think where the brewery is might, might have impacted this, the, the, the flavour profile. Um, and then James has come back in with, I think this is fairly young. When I say young, he's even before six months. It's a benefit for another six to 12 months. Yeah, I already have a note down for my final section that I've lost the bottles for a bit. Um, and I'll bring it back next year. Mm. Uh, which is for, for, for things like empty stouts and barley wines, is actually a fairly common comment for score sheets. Yeah, it's quite common for them to be entered for younger than they should be into competition. Okay, so if everybody scores in, while well, we think about where we'd be going. So James is coming in with the 16. Uh, alcohol thing, the lack of complexity knocks it down a few. Uh, it will be 17 if he was generous on the aroma. Yeah, you can balance it out like that, as said Sarah said repeatedly. Uh, if you are being generous with one, you can knock the other one down a bit, another one down a little bit. I do like these bottles because you can reseal them and yeah, yeah what, I don't know what it is about European bottles and the labels coming off really easily. I know, yeah. Belgian ones in particular. I know in I mean, Germany it's sort of there's um, a sort of requirement for it because they have to be able to take the bottles in, recycle them, and reuse them. So the label has to come off easy. I don't know if yeah. it's the same with Belgium. As if there's um, James, that anybody's got a copy of my beer, will know I, I put everything in Duval bottles um, because they're strong, easy to get the labels off, and you can buy them in supermarkets and they come with a nice beer in them. Mm. 
Yeah, I mean, Duval, I've always said, is underrated by a lot of people. It went down really well, always does, and we enjoyed doing it last time on the show. So we've got a 17 from Steve. <coughs> Pen, mate. Yeah, I, I reckon we'd be. I reckon I'd probably be around around the 17 as well, probably calling out, yeah, a little bit on the alcohol thing and a lack of complexity. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on there, but it doesn't quite work together yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, I think because of that finish, because of that sort of like spiciness, a little bit in the finish, or maybe alcohol in the finish. Yeah. Then it, it kind of that's your lasting impression. So you you kind of quickly forget about everything else that you've tasted. Um, I, I think I, I think there's still quite a bit going on, but like you said, Rich, the intensity again is low. We said this about the about the aroma. Um, again, lots going on in the aroma, but all the lower levels, they, they all sort of intermingled a little, little bit better to me in the aroma than what they did in the flavour. The lasting impression is something a little bit quirky and not what I was expecting. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, I think I'll be coming in about a 16. It's, it's kind of lacking... When I see complex in terms of a beer... I'm expecting a lot of things that really work well together. Um, it's got a lot going on, but nothing's dominating the other things. Um, this spiciness is kind of getting to the point where it's stamping over other things for me. Um, it's a bit too prominent. It's something that probably would age out a bit. So again, I think we're talking about the beer being quite young. Uh, I'd also like a bit more roast character in there. Whilst technically it's not outside of the style guide, just personal preference. So if I'm having an impy stout, I want the roast characters to be quite intense. And I mean, again, it, it does say that the flavours can be quite intense there. It doesn't say they have to be, though. But yeah, 16 is about where it is for me. Yeah, I mean, one of the one area I might talk a little bit about is, is the sort of bitterness side of it. Because we're sort of looking for a medium to aggressively high in descriptor. And yeah, this is probably just medium. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. Even like, with, sort of, uh, with the low level of malt not accentuating that. The, the roastiness, the, the low level of roastiness not accentuating that, which is going to happen in the more, the more, more aggressive style of impy stout. Mm hmm. Yeah, certainly. All right, um, so that's our scores for flavour. Let's move on to mouthfeel then, shall we? We're talking about the body, the carbonation, the warmth, the creaminess, the astringency and other palate sensations. Uh, do you want to do the honours and tell us about what the mouthfeel should be, Dan? Um, yeah, so, um, so we've got full to very full bodied um, and chewy, uh, which is interesting. We have a velvety, loose, uh, luscious texture. Um, fantastic descriptors there. Um, the body and texture may decline with age. Uh, general smooth warmth should be present and noticeable, but as a background character. And uh, low to moderate carbonation. So how do people think that it matches with that then? How are they describing the beer? Tell me what you think of the body for a start. Well, the, the descriptor here, we are right at the top of intensive uh, of, uh, mouthfeel here. So full to very full body is... Pretty pretty extreme here. Yeah. Yeah. We've got. Or should I? Here. Or should I say it should be pretty extreme here? Yeah. <laughs> if that's not giving too many hints. Uh, <laughs> so three words: yeah. hits on carbonation, but not much else. Body is definitely not chewy. Yeah, I, I think I agree. It, it's medium full at best um, for me. 
Yeah, um, I, I, I think medium full's almost being generous. For me, it's bang on medium. Yeah. I'm struggling I'm struggling a little bit with carbonation, to be honest. I think it's a little bit high for style. It foams up a little bit too much in the mouth. Um, for me, it gets a bit sherbety in the, in, in, in the mouth. Um, yeah, I mean, this, this may be because this is a... This is a Belgian beer. They 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 just call it stout. <laughs> yeah. um, those those yeah. start details for these guys. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. I I, I think I'd probably. I think by, by now I'm I'm probably a moderate carbonation, but I think it's starting a bit higher. Yeah, I've just done a second pour, and it's it's definitely a little bit. Yeah, I mean I've just done a fresh pour, me. and it's right at the top end of moderate it it's pushing it a bit too much um, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. that was the most tricky thing for us as, as judges was understanding your levels and um you know sort of and and the the, the best thing that we did there was a, i think in the first session there was a group of eight of us and we'd always talk about levels the further we went on in the training we'd always talk about levels and people's perception of levels is like so different and and, it, and it's just trying to hone it in and i think it's just an experience thing i think it's just sitting opposite another judge and listening and thinking about what they're getting and learning from it and saying mm -hmm. right okay and then baselining yourself it, it can be a little bit style specific as well so yeah we're judging yeah. yeah an american light larger Versus yeah. something like this, medium. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's too low in this and way too high. They're the, the, the like longer, but even they would not meet. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. James it likes his sherbet. Yeah. Um, you just think about those styles and those sort of like ranges. So you go to, to to one range of carbonation, if you like, like you say, American light lager, and then you go to the opposite end, maybe a mile something like that, then, then there's your baselines and you've got to try and work out what's in between. It's quite mm. fascinating, actually, part of, the, part of the training. I mean, we were very lucky. Um, we had Sam do a training in Bristol and we basically drank literally every single style from the guideline he could get his hands on. Uh, which even included a Finnish Surti that someone flew home with them that had been brewed three days before and nice. things like that. Um, so that gave us a very good example of this is at the high end, this is at the low end, this is at the high end for this style. Because, I mean, we'll, we'll do a style and then it would be like we'll do light lurgers uh, or lurgers and there'll be like three different ones for the different types. And he'll be very good at pointing out, right, these are the differences between them. Do you get the lower level of carbonation, higher? Uh, so we learnt a lot from that process. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Steve Cole, medium high carbonation with a velvety smoothness and effervescence that, uh, effervescence that bounces around the palate. Why do I find it hard to say that word tonight? <laughs> um, <laughs> James is coming back thing on he's coming back to the thing on co coffee cupping, which effectively coffee tasting recently. Yeah, tasting is subjective. You need to compare to calibrate and make the objective. Oh yeah, which is pretty much true. I mean that coffee talking about body is even harder to deal with than beer, because at least there is variation. When coffee people talk full body versus light body, the difference is this much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is true. Yeah, this is indeed true. So, if we get some scores in for mouthfeel. So, out of five points. I mean, with, with these beers, you quite, with empty stamps, you quite often get something in on the astringency, uh, just from the level of roast in them. Uh, but in this case, I'm not getting any of that at all. Uh, it is quite smooth, to be fair. It's, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and creamness is the other one, though. Yeah. Whether that's the same as, as a velvety, luscious texture, um, it's one of these, these which particular with description do you go with? Yeah, this is the one where I'm actually going to end up being a bit harsh, probably. Yeah, James coming with three. 
Uh, body carbonic bite is knocking it back. I think. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, those are the sort of areas I'd be talking about. Uh, people are just building the two. So one for carbonation, one for warmth, three from Steve. Yeah, I'd probably end up at the three, talking about the carbonation level in the body, um, though I could understand the two very easily. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll be at a two for this one. I did say I was going to be a bit harsh. It's the body. It's just not full enough body. You're not getting that luscious mouthfeel. It's not velvety. It's a bit harsh. There is too much carbonation there. Um, I'd, I'd like it to be a lot lower in carbonation, but the style does allow for it to be a bit lower. Uh, but I think this is outside the style for carbonation as well. Dan? Uh, for me, mouth feels like first impression. Um, it's when you put the, the beer in your mouth first and, and, and it's, you know, it's, 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 it's that sort of, they, they talk about, luscious velvety texture that's what you want to get from an impy yes and impy stout that was that's what makes you kind of from a flavor point of view or for, from that those steps it kind of makes you fall in love with the beer and um and that, and that first impression to me is really important this isn't doing it for me although i i sort of you know from from a scores i've gone to uh i've gone to three um as well Bit more, well, yeah, a bit more body. That carbonation is a bit. I hate fizzy imperial stouts. We get yeah. a few of them. You know, with the um, some of the pastry imperial yeah. stouts, they can be a little bit, a little bit fizzy. They sort of almost carry on fermenting in the bottles, etc., a little bit, and they get a bit too fizzy. Um, so, um, and and even with home brewing imperial stouts, um, whatever sort of carbonation level recipes are suggesting i usually halve that now because if you start aging it it tends to carry on in the bottles a yeah. bit and uh, and yeah for me yeah you shouldn't have a fizzy imperial stout so yeah i've got a three on that cool yeah on that score i know some people have started um or stopped priming imperial stouts when they put them down uh, because yeah. they do tend to go on a bit longer and they don't yeah. want as high a carbonation to begin with yeah. uh, three words comes back with a good one it's Belgian yeast so maybe diastaticus it's possible I don't know what yeast they use um, yeah. yeah I think it's, this is unlikely to be something like a it's more likely to be some sort of Belgian yeast rather mm -hmm. than a, uh, the, the classic of this which would be one of the English ales or USO5 um, or one of the strong Strong out leaf yeasts like the Thomas Hardy or something. Um, yeah, it's plausible that they've the, got something there that you're eating through the yeah. longer chain, slightly longer chain sugars, which to pulling the body down. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point, and it's something that doesn't get mentioned often enough. Uh, if, you, if the yeast keep chewing away on it, the body goes down. Okay. Um, that leads us to overall impression. The most important bit on the sheet from the point of view of most entrants at competition. Talk about the overall drinking pleasure associated with the entry and give suggestions for improvement. So this is where you look back at all the things you've thought could be improved and explain that to the brewer who's entered the beer. So again, we try to be process agnostic or as process agnostic as possible and try not to make assumptions about how the beer was brewed uh, this often leads to you hedging your um, feedback in terms of um, a bit more malt or use some more extract things like that maybe so let's see what did you think of this beer did you enjoy it how can it be a better example of a 20C Imperial Stout? I think um, there's one, one, one thing here that I would be saying uh, that I'm fairly confident of that I probably wouldn't actually hedge, which is go lose some bottles and send some next year. Because um, <laughs> yeah. I think we've said it a few times, I think a beer like this 
Aid helps a lot. Um, it gets rid of uh, some of those alcohol things we were talking about earlier. Some of those will go away. You'll gain some more of the sort of vinous port and sherry-like things that are really rather nice. Um, it certainly won't help some of the other things, but I think that's one I'd be fairly confident of writing, just writing that. Yeah, I mean, on that basis, you obviously know the beer comes in a bottle. It's quite easy process step to say lose the bottles for a year. Um, it would be a lot harder to say keep it in the folders for an extra year because you don't know whether they do or don't use them. But yeah. keep it in the bottle for yeah. a year, that's definitely valid. Um, I think it's trying to be a stout, but is really more of a restrained, roasty, dark, strong. But it is lovely. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting categorization call. Mm. I think there's a little bit too much roasty to be to get into dark strong, but I'd have to go and read the category again. Um, but that that would that would be a hard one to put into an exam. Put uh, a Belgian MP stout in as a dark strong or vice versa. <laughs> oh, that would be mean. <laughs> now, if I can get the proctors for it. Yeah, <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd like to proctor that one. <laughs> I can't do it. Um, yeah. No, I mean, certainly if I was picking beers for an exam, this would not be it. Um, but it was what we could get, being as this is mainly out of MP season for most places. It's a little bit warm for MP stout drinking. Yeah. <laughs> it is. And, and um, I'm getting a little bit of a rosy cheek feeling from it, which is quite nice. So. Um, but yeah, so, the overall impression um, we saw, like when we did the training at, at Worcester, um, the overall impression we like to do a what we call a shit sandwich, which is essentially yeah. start off with some really nice points. You then put a couple of suggestions for improvements, and then you finish with a positive as well. Yeah. Um, and it's I think it's it's good if, because it is like you know I I enjoy drinking this beer, etc. It's your chance just to say, you know, the drinkability and how you enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, you, you always try and get a couple of points for improvements down and how they can improve the beer. Yeah, I mean, one of the things I've learned at Toastmasters, which is about public speaking, is um, it's very important to get those points for improvement or PFIs in. Because if yeah. there is no feedback or no point for improvement so that the person can do better next time, they yeah. they must already be perfect. So therefore, why aren't they getting 50 out of 50, basically? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so a couple of comments. So a pleasant beer, but lacking in complexity a little. The alcohol notes overpower the other notes a little at the moment. The beer will benefit from age. It will also benefit from a little more body. And yeah, I'll probably take that. that. That's good. I'll probably extend that with to go for a little bit more body. Either look at recipe formulation, look at what your grains are or mash temperatures. Just mention a few of those things. Um, not they things like mash temp actually make a huge difference. Recipes probably more likely. Um. There's a nice comment from three words here, and this is what I often do in this section. It does give you that chance to think outside the BJCP as well as just inside the BJCP. And I think with this beer, a lot of my feedback would be, this is an absolutely lovely beer. It is a great Belgian stout where you've got those Belgian characters coming through. However, it's not the greatest imperial stout. This is how I would improve it. And I'll, that's when I'd start talking about uh, body, uh, more malt or extract used to up the body, maybe um, maybe mash shorter. There's any number of ways you can increase the body. I'll suggest lowering carbonation. That could be via aging the beer. Uh, if it's in the bottle, though, it's going to increase in carbonation probably rather than decrease as it continues to keep fermenting a little bit. Um, 
but yeah the these are the things i'll be talking about here i really enjoyed the beer it's a lovely beer i'd love to drink more of it i'd love the recipe but it's not necessarily the world's best example of this style because it's, it's actually quite interesting that we haven't got a Belgian stout category yet, because there's quite a lot of them around now. Yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. this yeah. is a val very valid point. If um, you're rich, you need to write it. And... <laughs> uh, we need to get a Belgian person to write it. <laughs> <laughs> that, would be the, um, that would be the best way to get it in there. Yeah. Because yeah. the thing that's always bugged me about the BJCP is when you see, um, like, a classic... Uh, British best bitter described by an American, and we're like, yeah. that is not any best bitter I have ever had in my life. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was more the two versions ago. Yeah, so it's the, getting the last, better. Yeah, the last version was attempting to get the locals to write it, which meant they were all very different. Mm. And the 21 version is trying to make them all the same again, but keeping the information from the locals. Uh, yeah. And from Steve, I think the beer's a bit young, would benefit from some age. The spiciness overpowers everything else as it warms up and would benefit from a bit more body. Um, again, there's not a single point of that I'll disagree. If you were doing this from an exam point of view, I would suggest, as Rich pointed out, look at suggesting some possible or potential process changes or recipe changes they can make to produce that more body or reduce the spiciness as i've got through more of this beer i'm more and more convinced that spiciness is coming from a belgian yeast strain that's uh, phenolic positive yeah i think i will quite happily agree with you on that one that there's definitely some it's not just hot alcohol too it's not just peppery alcohol it's just something peppery Peppery head, the, the, the light end of phenols coming in there. So what does everyone think on their, their scores out of 10? Yeah, so out of 10, how did that compare with the overall... Did we read the overall impression? Are we slacking? I'll read that quickly. Um, so it is an intensely flavoured, very strong dark stout with a broad range of interpretations. Note the broad range. Roasty burnt malt with a depth of dark or dried fruit flavours. Sorry, I'm not ducking and weaving because of the alcohol. It's because my mic's there right in the middle of the screen. Um, or dried fruit flavours. A warming or bittersweet finish. Despite the intense flavours, the components need to meld together to create a complex, harmonious beer, not a hot mess. Sometimes only <laughs> yeah. accomplished with age. Yeah, when judging this one, this is this is another one of those categories where you're in the the a slight scary sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um empty stouts can be usually, usually they're they they're good to great, but they can be awful. Um like the Belgian strong categories. Um So we've got to the go be harsh from James five, nice beer doesn't hit the style. Yeah, I don't think it's it's just about within the guidelines, but yeah, I can't do that. But I, I, I that's not that far off where I'd be. Yeah, I mean, for me, and I'm sure Dan or Rich might have different impressions on this, but for me, the overall impression section is where I get to add or score that certain intangible something that yeah. makes a beer go from meh to oh my this is the best world in the beer in the world so this is the section where it's much more open to interpretation and personal preferences so i don't think five is going to be harsh that's probably about where i'll be on this one it's a nice beer it's not the best example of the style from my point of view yeah, I yeah. About this uh, to to sort of correlate with everything else, um, a bit, and then, then, then it being radically different from the scores in other sections, this doesn't feel quite right to me for an overall impression. Um, so 
for me, I might as well, might as well go here. I'd probably end up with about a seven, but then I'd probably go back to one of my other scores and drop a point. Um, because it, it doesn't feel that the right, it feels a little high in the final score. So I'll probably at least tweak, tweak some of the other points, the other ones, pull it down a little bit, um, and end up at around 40, I think, in total, rather than yeah. my, my written down score, end up at 41, which just feels a little high. Okay. Uh, it's a very good beer, but it, it's got a few things that don't quite match in Beast Out. Yeah, so three words has come in with it's hard to score this section low as it's really enjoyable, but that mouthfeel puts it out style. I'll go six. Okay, and six from Steve as well. And uh, James ends up at 39 in total, feels about right. It's a good beer, not a million miles off, and he's tweaking and aging. Yep, yeah. so I've talk about seven. sorry, sorry, yeah, I've got a seven on overall impression. Um, I always start at a 10, and did I really enjoy this beer? I did, to be honest. Um, yeah, nice, nice beer to nice beer to drink. But then, but then I think about what I love about Imperial Stouts. Um, I love the body. Like I say, that first impression to me when you taste the beer, that it's all about that. Um, so I docked a point for that. Um, the spiciness, I didn't think it was too bad, but it wasn't a style. So I docked a point for that. Um, and then the carbonation level. I don't. I don't like these things. So, <laughs> so yeah, I dropped the point for that. So I ended up at a seven. Yeah, all perfectly cool. reasonable. Uh, Any more topics coming in for anyone else? Was anyone else's numbers added up to? So yeah, final scores on the doors out of fifty. Where's this beer fit? So, 45.50 is a world-class example, 38.44. It exemplifies the style well, but requires some minor tuning. Very good, 30 to 37. It's generally within style parameters with some minor flaws. Uh, good, 21 to 29, misses the mark on style and or minor flaws. I don't think for one second anyone's going to be scoring this below that. So I won't no. cover the others. So we've got a 40 in from Steve. Uh, yeah, we said, we said we had a 39 from James. Yeah. yeah as I say, I, I just tweaked line to get to 40. Uh, yeah, three words against 39. Um, yeah, I think we're all in the same sort of region at least the guys on the online are. What about you two? Uh, 37 it adds up to for me. Um, I'm really not getting that luscious velvety mouthfeel, which to me is a key characteristic of the style uh, I'm getting spiciness that shouldn't be there I'm getting a high carbonation I mean the more I drink it the higher it seems almost to me it's pushed just out of medium into the bottom end of the high range I'm actually getting a tiny little bit of carbonic bite from it at times so these are the things that for me have pushed it out of style and if I look back at the final scores I came in at 37, so it's generally within style parameters, some minor flaws, which for my thinking is about right. Um, so Yeah, I, I can see any score. We're all within, within the yeah. consensus of each other so far. What, uh, what was your total, Rich, sorry? I will, without tweaking, it was 41, but I pulled that down to 40 with yeah. some adjustments and then... then Maybe thirty nine. That's but perfectly it's in that within sort range. Of region. Yeah. I think it's a. I think it's at the bottom of that that excellent region. Um, it is not fine tuning. A bit bigger than fine tuning, but a little less than moderate changes. So it's sort of in that on that borderline. Um, and where did you come in, Dan? Uh, I was forty. The score sheet yeah. um, ended up at forty. So yeah, seven points for our rolling question uh, pushed it. Pushed it to forty, which I, yeah, for me it's kind of uh, it's kind of right. It does need fine tuning. Um, there's all stuff that they can that they can work on. Um, I read the website just before we came on stream, and um, um, and there was a aiming for an English style with this. Um, 
which, uh, which I think um, is a little bit off mark. I'll, I'll <laughs> say they missed the mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah. say if this was archery and they were aiming for that, they kind of just missed the board. <laughs> That's Belgium. Um, <laughs> yeah, Belgian yeah. stout. They hit it, hit it on the nail, <laughs> bullseye. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, that's a really good comment from James. Um, in terms of in terms of the guidelines, because the guidelines are sort of so wide, then it's done well. Um, and if they did make it a little bit tighter, then yeah. uh, then. Probably would be lower. It's a good shout, James. It is. It's very good shout, and it's how can I put this? Um, we don't get fur as judges without being opinionated. This is my favourite style. Uh, my opinion is that if you've got, if you're only reaching a medium body, and you've got a high carbonation, then it shouldn't be in style. Um, is my opinion. It isn't what's in the rules so that or the guidelines, so therefore it's still scored highly as from me as a very good example or whatever. But to be excellent it needs some tweaking. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Any closing comments from anyone before we uh say goodbye to everyone? It's just gone nine. Well we point people back to the, the, the competition we mentioned earlier. Um, get your entries in. I'm sure it will fill up soon. Yeah. Did you drop the link in the chat, Dan? Yeah, I dropped it earlier. Okay. okay. Cool. If someone can drop it again, that would be amazing. Um, and a reminder that we're taking the week off next week. Uh, before we come back the following week for the last beer. Um, maybe we'll do an ad hoc one sometime with. Um, a uh, guest beer from Innocent Gun, which was a request from last time, <laughs> um, or something else. I think Innocent Gun is the biggest available beer that clearly features one of the what's considered a fault in the beer guide. Uh, this, this series we sort of been doing nearly classic examples for each one, so yeah. uh, we will see what we want to do next, some one offs or whatever. Yeah, it might be we some one-offs, or it might be next year. We wait till next year and do a series of completely out-of-style beers. <laughs> Can I just request that we do an Imperial Stout every season? Um, <laughs> if we do, I will... It might push the price up a bit, but yeah. if we do, we will do what I consider an Imperial Stout, and we'll see how much you like it. <laughs> How's that for a deal? Sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds All right, good. thanks ever so much for joining us then, everyone. Uh, we hope you'll join us in two weeks' time when we do the last beer of the season, which is the A-Inger Celebrator. And I look forward to seeing you then. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching Daft Cat Brewing.